time that you spend with Him. Whether it's in the Word, whether it's in worship, prayer, or watching videos like this that give God all the glory and for your benefit. This particular video is a short video about the rapture. And I also want to talk about my rapture dream that I had. The rapture, first of all, is spoken of many times in the Bible. The actual word is not there, but the description is. Many times people want to defuse the thought of, a rap of the rapture happening because they see the word not being in there. But the truth is, gambling, the description of gambling is in there. The description of hurricane is in there. The description of homosexuality is in there. But the actual words are not. Same way with the rapture. The rapture means to be caught up or to be snatched away to avoid wrath or to avoid danger. That's the great part of a rapture. There's been seven raptures in the Bible. So we can get into that and you'll see it on one of the teachings, the seven different raptures that have taken place. But right now, we're gonna talk about the rapture that is at hand. This is the year 2017. I don't know what year you will be watching this video, but I wanna give you just a list of Bible verses that tell us that it is upon us. The Lord said in Genesis and in Job that we that he made the sun, moon, and stars for our benefit as signs. Not horoscope, not astrology, but astronomy. When Jesus was born, there was a sign in the heavens, and the three wise men came and saw the Messiah. Many times throughout history, we look for a sign from God so we know we're on the right track and we're not making a mistake. Very wise thing to do. Jesus looked at the, at the uh, Pharisees and he said, you are an evil generation because you always look for a sign. They were looking for a sign for the Messiah. And he says, I'm standing right here in front of you. But he's talking about a different kind of sign. A sign that says, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Now here's the interesting part. There are over 43 signs that I could give you, but I'm not going to put them on this particular video. We'll divide them up into different ones. But just key Bible verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 says that we will be caught up. Okay, talks about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Luke, the whole chapter of 21. Matthew 24, the whole chapter of Matthew 24. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 talks about I, the Lord will keep you and I, those that overcome sin, only those that overcome sin. He said, I will keep you from the wrath to come. Well, how can he keep us from the wrath to come unless we're not here when the wrath hits? And then you skip ahead in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and it talks about us being caught up to the heaven again. There are so many references, but how do we know when this happens? True story being, a lot of people enjoy their life. They enjoy their house, they enjoy their car, they enjoy their family, they enjoy their friends, they enjoy their career, they enjoy their money, they enjoy life in general and they really would rather not the rapture happen. Why? Because there's nothing wrong with enjoying life, but that's because Yeshua is second, third or fourth in their life. I lived it, I know. I cannot give something away that I don't have. And I've lived this life and overcome it. And this is why I have it to give back to you. Please. He said, seek first the kingdom of heaven. He also said, if you do not, if you do not hate. Now this sounds really strange in America, but in Hebrew, it makes a lot of sense. Hate in America means to hate someone. Hate in Hebrew simply means to like less than. And he said, if you do not hate your mother, your brother, your, your sister, your brother before me, he said, you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. How can someone, what he's saying is, is put me first before your family. Put me first before your career. Put me first before your life and all the things that you have in your heart that are more important than spending time with me. That's how Jesus talks. So we'll know that personally by where our heart is, what we desire to do the most and where we spend more time what we think about the most. They're called idols. And if we have idols in front of Yeshua, we will miss the rapture. So please, please, I beg of you, read your Bible now more than ever. Obey it now more than ever. 
and walk away from sin now more than ever because time is very, very short. Whether the rapture happens in 2017 or not, doesn't matter. It matters that we're seeing signs all over the place that Jesus said to see. So whether we want it to or not, the signs are there. Whether we're ready for it or not, the signs are there, which means it's upon us. Non-Christians and Christians, Jews, every religion on this earth is really concerned right now because of what's taking place in the heavens and now on earth. Today, this date, I usually don't date my videos, but today I'll date it. Today is September the 28th, 2017. What a powerful month and year to be living in. According to us Jews, it is our uh, year of, um, it's our seventh year, first of all. And it's also our Shabbat, and it's also our Jubilee year, which is our 50 year. Okay, our 50 year Jubilee, which means when everything is canceled and wiped out and every debt you owe is, it's beautiful. Every debt you owe is cast down. That's what Jesus does when you get saved. He puts your sin underneath the blood and you don't remember it and he doesn't remember it anymore. The only time we are to bring it up, if anyone asks is for our testimony or for us pastors who we share we used to and we don't anymore. That's the only time we need to be reminded of our past. Now, the point of this video is to let you know the signs that are happening here. Does Dr. Hope say that the rapture is for sure going to happen in September of 2017? No. But I'm saying the signs are here. If a mother at eight months along, her water breaks, or she's going into labor, that means the signs are there that the baby's coming. Even though it may not be the full nine months or nine and a half months, what if her water breaks at eight or eight and a half months, or, or her, or her uh, pain start? Oh my goodness. We have to get her to the hospital right away because the signs are here. That's what's happening right now. And many people don't want it to happen. They keep giving the excuse, no man knows the day or the hour, or this hasn't happened, that. Everything has happened. And this is where I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 21, verse 25. Luke 21, 25. Jesus said it himself. There will be signs. He's talking about his return to pick us up, to take us back. There will be signs in the sun. August 21st took place, the eclipse. Signs in the moon, August 21st took place, where the moon passed in front of the sun. Also, the moon took place in 2014 and 15, when the two red blood moons took place exactly on Holy Day Feast in the spring and the fall, and exactly on Holy Day Feast in the spring and the fall in 2015. He said, Joel chapter 2, verse 31, Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, which is the rapture, the sun will be darkened. The moon will turn to red. That already happened. Let's go back to Luke 21, 30, 25. It says there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. The stars? Ah, the stars have been happening for two years. There's been two suns in the sky. You can go all over YouTube videos, including mine, and you will see my YouTube videos of two suns in the sky. One of them was Planet X. They call me Brew. It was two years ago, it was from east to west away from our real sun. And now it's so close, it traveled so fast, it's so close to our sun, they look like two deviled eggs in the sky. That planet is coming towards the earth. There's videos out there that say that it's going to slam into the earth. It's not going to slam into the earth because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says this planet has a tail. And in its tail, there's a bunch of debris. And then when it swings around the earth, it will throw the debris into the earth and the asteroids and earthquakes and hurricanes will happen all at the same time. That's what's happening right now. The planet is sucking with its magnetic pull. It's sucking the water. It's sucking the sand. It's sucking everything out of the earth and the earth is off. It's, things are, are, are being pulled one way and another and it's going to affect the, the vibrations of the earth, which is earthquakes, and it will start at the equator and work its way out. They call it a pole shift. I'm not exactly sure about the full dramatics of all that because I base my 
my uh, uh, teachings to you on the Word of God. And then, of course, when they match up with the, with the news, when the news and the Bible matches together, we start looking up. Luke 21, 25 also said this, in the stars, okay, we know about the stars happening. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is happening in the heavens, September 23rd and on. There will be a woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet and 12 stars above her head. Normally there's only nine stars above her head, but in this case there's three more planets lined up, as we all know, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, to make it 12. Why 12? To represent the 12 apostles, to represent the 12 tribes of Israel, to represent that we are now his disciples. Everything to do with Yeshua HaMashiach, the line of the tribe of Judah. Even Regulus, the king, the king star, and then the king planet Jupiter is in Virgo's womb, which is Virgin Mary, also representing Israel. Talks about the child being born. Jesus was already born. Guess who now is coming out of the womb? We, his church. We are one because we have taken on the last name of Christ. When a husband and a wife marry, the wife takes on the husband's last name. And in this case, we become Christians. So we have taken on Christ's last name. So we now are coming out of the birth canal on, actually it starts on September 9th, but we completely are out of the birth canal by in the heavens in astronomy, not astrology, by October the 8th. But the significant day when it all happens at once is September 23rd. This is why I'm talking to you on September the 8th, 2017. Jesus also said, let me finish off that verse. Jesus also said, in that same verse, that men will be perplexed and in anguish over the stirring of the winds of the seas. That's a hurricane. They didn't have the word hurricane over there, but they described it. The stirring of the winds of the seas. And the Bible even says men's heart will fail them. Why? Because they know all of their possessions will be gone and it may take years because their heart is with their possessions and not with the Lord. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Now today, September the 8th, 2017, as a matter of fact, it happened uh, five minutes to midnight on the 7th that Mexico had a record-setting earthquake. This is what Nebru is bringing. And I spoke about this about a month ago at my church. I said, wait for the earthquakes to start happening. Wait for the tsunamis to start happening. That took, that's taking place right now as we're speaking on this video. 8.1 earthquake, but that's not all. It's heading up the coast to the west coast. The east coast is getting hit by tsunamis. The west coast will have earthquakes just like the Bible says, but it's just not here. Nepal and India are up to their necks in waters. Thousands of deaths, thousands of deaths. Ah, in America we had over 60. Because of the stirring of the seas, because of the days of Noah. He says, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns, as in the days of Noah. Well, when you think of Noah, you think of the flood. He won't flood the whole earth, but he'll flood different parts to get our attention. There are so many Bible verses that are happening right now, and only a fool would ignore it. We didn't pick it, and truthfully, we don't want disaster to happen, but we know when it's coming that Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 is at, our, is at hand. Jesus will snatch us out, just like he did the children of Israel out of Egypt and out of the Red Sea. He pulled his saints away from trouble so many times. And here's the last thing. Do you think he would punish his own Holy Spirit? Ah! That's one of his trinity. The Holy Spirit lives right here. So why would God punish his own Holy Spirit? He will take all those with the Holy Spirit in the rapture. And those without the Holy Spirit will be left behind. Or those with just a little bit of the Holy Spirit will be left behind. Is that biblical? Yes, it is. Matthew chapter 24, excuse me, 25, talks about the ten virgins. Five were filled with the Holy Spirit, and five only had a little bit of the Holy Spirit. And the five that had a little bit were left behind to go through the tribulation. And the five that were filled with the Holy Spirit made the rapture. 
And the, as soon as the rapture happened, they knocked, they were crying out to God. They were knocking, up, knocking at the door, Jesus said. And he said, I opened the door a crack and said to them, depart from me, I know you not. Who are you? You didn't spend any time with me. I don't know you. It's a scary thought. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Right here. The precious, powerful word of God. He inspired it. When you spend time with God, he fills you like a gas tank. It's that simple. Listen, so many signs have taken place and you're going to uh, watch these videos uh, throughout all my videos that I teach in Messianic Torah class. I've been teaching it for the last two to three months at my Torah class about the rapture, the rapture, the rapture, the rapture, and all the signs. The temple is already being started to be built underneath the dome. It had to be stopped as of December the 23rd when the president at that time pulled Israel's status with the UN, tried to uh, take it away from the, the, the nationality that it has. Jesus will come back at the end of the seven years and reestablish Israel with its authority and its nation. That had to be fulfilled. That's another sign that had to be fulfilled before the rapture could happen. But the dome will not be taken off and the temple will not be visibly seen until the Antichrist steps on the scene. And that doesn't take place until the rapture happens. The saints have to be gone. Then the Antichrist comes and brings peace because everyone will be panicking because someone they know is missing. Either their animal is missing, their child is missing, their spouse is missing, their friend is missing, or a family member or a co-worker is missing. Graves will be turned up all over this earth of all the people that read their Bible as a symbol. This is who made it to heaven. And so they can have their supernatural glorified body. So many other signs have taken place as well. But enough is enough right now. We don't need to go into all the detail. You'll see it on the, on the other videos. When the hurricanes happen, the earthquakes happen, the sun is darkened, the moon has turned red, and the stars are taking place, including Nebru and Revelation chapter 12 and September 23rd, when all of them are happening at the same time. We have to know that God is trying to get our undivided attention. Why? Because he doesn't want you to suffer through the tribulation. People think they're just going to go die for Christ. I have watched videos of powerful men and women of God that have talked about what will take place. They will A martial law will take place because the whole earth will be in panic and they'll have one world leader, which is the Antichrist, the beast. But they will throw all these people that do not want to take the microchip into prison. They will torture you and torture you and torture you in prison to try to get you to take the mark of the beast, which is the microchip in your forehead or your right hand. And if you don't take it, you will suffer through the torture and eventually get your head cut off. Just like Hitler tortured all of the Jews, so the Antichrist will torture everyone that believes Jesus is the Messiah and believes in the Bible. Churches will be burned. Bibles will be burned. There will be no big ministries all over this earth because they're going to be hiding out in their houses so they don't get beheaded. So what to do if you miss the rapture? Prepare to die for Christ. Do not take the microchip. Do not take it in your forehead or your hand. You cannot buy or sell gasoline, food, for your children that didn't make the rapture, the older ones that were 12 and older, for yourself. You will have to take the, take the, the hard way, and, and they're going to torture a lot of people. They're going to try to get you to take the mark of the beast. Don't take it. Everyone that takes the mark of the beast will make it to, they will end up in hell. They will not see the kingdom of heaven. It's not worth it. You can't access your bank account. You can't put gasoline in your car. Where are you going to go when your tank runs out? Where are you going to go when your five gallons or your 50 gallons of gas runs out? It can't last seven years. All hell will break loose. Give in and humble, humble, humble yourself before our God and repent and say, I, this is it. I'm not going to go to hell and suffer even more. I will die for you, do what it takes, and end up in heaven. And this is the good part. When all those that miss the rapture, that suffer through, the Bible says it's a huge multitude. Let me be honest with you, it's half the earth. Half the earth. One third of us will be gone or less. The Bible says one third or less will be gone in the rapture. So that means the rest, the, the, the earth will be split in half. And half the earth will refuse to take the microchip, and they will die for Christ. You know they have FEMA camps set up, they have guillotine set up, 
And they're preparing to chop the heads off of these Christians that refuse to take the microchip. And by then, there will be no certain religion. The Christians are going to unite like never before. Remember when it will be the greatest revival this earth has ever seen. <laughs> it surely will. Because they're going to humble themselves and get along and realize that Jesus is the Son of God. Set all the junk aside, the jealousy, the competition, just like they did in the upper room. When they all got together, 120 people got together for 10 days. Fasted and prayed, put up with each other's B.O. They put up with each other's bad breath and bad habits. And they finally said, it's not worth it. We want this spirit that Jesus promised us. And the Bible said, finally, when they got in one accord, that's what's going to happen during the tribulation. When the tribulation saints get in one accord and they humble themselves and say, man, we're going to give in and die for Christ. If we have to get tortured and get our head cut off, we will, we will refuse to take the mark of the beast and give in to the one world order. Mm -mm. The big, the big thing is God's going to test. He said it's the greatest test mankind will ever have. And even the elect, even the smart will give in and give away, give, give in to it. The, even the elect will be tempted and fooled to access their bank account, to buy gas, to buy food. Come on. It's not worth it. Get it over with and get to heaven. So it's not worth it to take the microchip, the one world order, or to give in to their system. When you die and go to heaven, you come back and you rule and reign with Christ on this earth. And you get all the wealth that the wicked people had that put their money before God. And the one rule that God says everyone will have to pass from the tribulation is this. You cannot serve mammon and God at the same time. You can't serve money and God. It's got to be one or the other. And that will be the greatest test during the tribulation. The only way to access money is through the microchip. Don't do it. It's not worth hell for eternity. There is no easy way out. Just pass every class and get it done. The Bible talks about it and everything that's happening right now on earth is in the Bible. So obviously the Bible does not lie, especially when you understand it in the Hebrew. People have said for years, oh, there's so many versions of the Bible and how do you know which one to believe? <laughs> That tells, you, that tells you anyone that understands the Hebrew that they're foolish and they're a, they're a uh, babe in Christ when it comes to spiritual understanding of the Word of God. Forget all the versions. Go back to the original version, which was written in Hebrew. Some of it was Arabic and some of it was Greek. The original one. And you will see what it means in the Hebrew, like I explained on the other video. It's easy to find out. So please, this is for the video, this is for the people that have missed the rapture. I urge you, your days ahead are brighter. When you get to heaven, we that made the rapture, we serve you in heaven. You're above all the rest of us because Jesus knows that you had to go through the worst of the worst times on earth. When there's no water, all the water will turn to blood. Every bit of water will turn to blood. How are you supposed to fight, survive without water? How are you supposed to survive when there's no animals left? How do we survive when there's no green grass or no crops? The shelves are empty. And the only way to access anything is bribe somebody here, take the chip, get gold, and buy what food somebody has stored up? No. Don't do it. Not worth it. Not worth it. Humble yourself and tell the Lord, whenever it's my time to go, it's my time to go. I give in to you. And I die for Christ during the tribulation. Listen, there's going to be 144,000 Jewish male Jews that are going to be there to encourage you. Elijah and Enoch, I believe it's Elijah and Enoch. It might be Elijah and Moses, but I doubt it. Elijah and Enoch, the two that did not die in this earth, will come back to uh, be the two witnesses. They'll be dressed in, in Hebrew clothes from way back then. So the whole, the Bible says the whole world will see them. How can the whole world see them? Unless they're seen literally in the sky, like the sun, moon, and stars, or unless internet and TV is still around. So this big thing about internet and TV being gone for good, it's not going to happen. Maybe later, or if it is, it'll be back, because the Bible says the whole earth will see them. 
And the only other way that can happen is if they're hanging out in the clouds. But that's not true either. Because they come down and they stand in the temple and they rebuke the Antichrist and they get shot. And they get shot in the head. And then what happens after that? They die. And the whole earth, the Bible says, watches their body lay dead for three days as they celebrate. And all of a sudden, while they're celebrating, their bodies are raised back to life and they go extended into heaven, another rapture. Now how can the whole earth see that unless there's internet and television? Hmm? 144,000 are not the Jehovah Witnesses. The 144,000, as it says in Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 14, are male Jews. Here's the description. They're without sin. Who on this earth is without sin? Come on. They have no guile in their mouth. They've never slept with a woman. And they're considered first fruits. They come from the four corners and the four winds of the earth. 144,000 male Jews right now? Who can that be on this earth? Who? No one. I'll tell you where they come from. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Jeremiah chapter 31. And Revelation chapter 7 and 14. And there's also Isaiah 53. I will put all the Bible verses up here on the screen for you to see that they all connect. You have to put the blue with the blue, the green with the green, the purple with the purple, the white with the white, the black with the black, and that's how we study the Bible to understand. We put the pieces together. Oh, because one prophet sees it, another prophet sees it, and God has this prophet see this, he has the next prophet see this, he has the next prophet see this, and then, because he never tells all the prophets everything. Why? If he told the prophets everything, we would be God. We're not God. So he tells us little by little by little by little. So we keep depending on him and listening for his voice and obeying him. Hmm. Ezekiel chapter 37 talks about when Ezekiel went to the, the dry bones. By the way, Matthew chapter 2 is a big part also. Matthew chapter 2 is when Herod killed all the two-year-old boys. When Jesus was born, the, the three wise men went to see him. They left another route. Herod realized that two years later he was upset that he was fooled by the, by the Hebrew, or excuse me, by the um, three wise men. And so he killed all the Hebrew boys from two years and under. And the Bible says he went to the coastline. And if you follow back where the coastline was, you find that back in the Old Testament when Jacob gave the um, locations of every one of the tribes of Israel where their part, portion of the land was. And every single one of them got a piece by the water, by the coastline. So that tells us every single one of the tribe of Israel was murdered that day. Then you go to Ezekiel chapter 37. And the very words coastline, cut off, every, and the, every, every blue matching blue, green matching green, yellow matching yellow words click together. So it shows they're talking about the same group of people. And these, in, in Ezekiel chapter 37, it says that when Ezekiel spoke and prophesied that the dry bones, the dead bones would be raised back to life. This is the great army of the end last days. Just like it says in Ezekiel chapter 37, I encourage you to study it. And God said to him, this is the whole house of Israel. Ah, he's telling you, these are dead babies from the whole house of Israel. And they are a great army. And then in Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2 says when the women cried, when Rachel, which is one of the mothers of the tribes of Israel, cried, she could not be, her tears could not be wiped away. She, could, she couldn't get over her lamenting. She kept crying because her baby boys were dead. And then it says, and this was fulfilled from the prophet Jeremiah when he spoke. So you go, hmm, Jeremiah. So we go back to Jeremiah chapter 31, and what's in there? 15, 16, and 17 say the same thing. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15, verse 15, 16, and 17 say, And this is the whole house of Israel. Rachel could not be uh, um, comforted because of the children having, having deceased. The exact verse that's in Matthew chapter 2 lines up with Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15 to the T. It's amazing. 
So you put the pieces together that the 144,000 are actually pure, sinless people that are coming back to earth. God is sending them back to earth. They've already died. They don't have to die twice. They're coming back to earth. And the Bible says they will regain their coastline. They will stand on the ground that was taken away from them. And they will help everybody that misses the rapture, that doesn't take the microchip. They will help you, and you will see it. There will be a mark on their forehead, and you'll be able to know that they are one of the 144,000. The Bible says everyone will know it. And they'll probably walk through walls. They'll walk through this window, and they'll sit down, and they'll eat with you, and then they'll disappear just like Jesus because they're in their glorified body. And they'll say, don't take the microchip. Be encouraged. Die for Christ. I'm here to encourage you. And I'm from the tribe of whatever tribe they're from. But they're 12,000 from every single tribe of Israel. So they will be there to encourage you. Listen to them. Read your Bible. And even, old, even if you only have one page, you spend more time in the Word of God during that tribulation than ever before. Because it will encourage you and give you faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Okay, I encourage you and I bless you and I pray, Father, I pray that the people watching this video, that they do not give in to sin, but they are overcomers. They learn to knock that cockroach off the table, smash it with the word of God, and go back to what they were doing. They don't put barbecue sauce on a stinking sin and eat it. No, you get it out of your life. Read your Bible, obey it and pray. And I say this lastly for all of you that are either watching this before the, the rapture or after the rapture. Three things we need to do to protect ourselves every day. If you walk into a store, there's a sign that says no shoot, no shirt, no shoes, no shorts, no service. Right? Three things. That's for the natural man. No shirt, no shorts, no shoes, no service. In the spirit realm, we need things too. And your spirit man is actually crying, starving. It needs to be dressed and it needs to be fed, just like our natural man. That spirit man either goes to heaven or hell, and it depends on what we're feeding it. And if it's feeding negative stuff, it will end up in hell. If it's feeding non-Christian stuff, it will end up in hell. But if it's fed the word of God, worship and prayer, it will end up in heaven. What do you do with that spirit man? You dress it every day to protect it. You just wake up every morning and you say, I apply the blood of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the whole armor of God on me and all that I have. And you can even apply it, apply it over your angel that's fighting on your behalf to bring your answer prayer back down to you and not someone else. Fire of the Holy Spirit, the whole armor of God, and the blood of Jesus. And you speak with authority. You don't speak like a wimp. You speak with authority. And you will get what you say. There's more videos to be watched if you'd like to click on some of the other ones, but uh, I encourage you to share this and know that every word that was spoken today comes right out of the Word of God. Maybe you didn't have the time to read the whole Bible. Maybe you didn't have time to understand the whole Bible, but this is our job. As pastors, as prophets, as priests, as teachers, as evangelists, this is what we do. We study the Bible and we teach it to you. And we expect you to grab a hold of it to make your life better. So maybe you don't have the time. This is your time. I will be your advocate. Get to heaven and never give in to sin. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I repent of all my sins. Whatever word, thoughts, and deeds I've done wrong in your sight, your sight, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. And I'll never do them again. Holy Spirit, I beg of you, take over my life and remove everything that should not be there and add what should. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and help my loved ones make it to heaven too. I seal this prayer with the fire of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and the whole armor of God. For you said, ask and you shall receive, and nothing is impossible with God. For your word does not return void, but accomplishes what we send it to do. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, Yeshua HaMashiach, the risen Son of God, we seal you in this prayer in Jesus' name.